You know, it's not even Halloween yet, but millions of kids already know what they want for Christmas. A new video game system called Nintendo 64. Nintendo's new game machine is 64 bits, making it the most powerful machine on the market. Nintendo took the power of a $100,000 computer workstation and put it into an affordable home game machine. The result? Some of the best video games ever made. Just a few years ago, this was state-of-the-art, flat and two-dimensional, with characters who had very limited movements. With Nintendo 64-bit technology, it's a whole new game. Now Mario lives in a 3D world, and you can make him go wherever you want. Nintendo 64. So what's the big deal and why is Toys R Us already sold out? Whatever you thought about video games before, set it aside, try it, it's a whole new experience. Parents, you've been warned. Nintendo 64 is very likely to produce this year's biggest holiday headache. Welcome to N64. But it's yeah, tell it to the judge. Tubers and Trolls, Chris here with Splash Gaming. One of the OG members of the Brew Crew with you. And you're watching my buddies Robert and Wes live out their nerd fantasies, drinking beer and playing games at Gaming Off The Grid. The N64 Bad beer month. I, I think we can get rid of these glasses. Yep, we're not pouring high life. We're drinking straight out of the bottle. <laughs> yeah, heck yeah, it's a champagne beer. Oh, did you hear that cr that crack? That mmm, dude. Cheers to bad beer month. Cheers to Miller High Life. Get this probably out of the way. We'll talk about it a little bit more, but probably one of our favorite beers. Yeah, one of our time. most drank beers in the game room. But we're talking about the N64 yeah. right now. The N64 launched September 29th of 1996, over a year after the PlayStation 1 came out. Yeah, yeah. That's it, a long time. Sony uh, got boots on the ground. I think the N64 did see some delays early on, but the hype around the console was for real. Yeah. If you grew up at the time, PS1 was already out, the Saturn was already out, and people were waiting for that next Nintendo console. Came out at $199.99, which uh, is, was pretty expensive at the time. Sony launched $100 higher than that, but they had adjusted their price down to $199. Yeah. I think in May, preceding the N64's release, like six to seven months after Sony had released the console, I think they were getting ready for Nintendo <laughs> they, to they, jump on the They knew seat. they were coming. So Sony crushed this generation in sales. The N64 only sold like 32, almost 33 million units, and the freaking PS1 sold over 100. Yeah. Like that's, in, that's not even close. It, it is kind of weird looking at the data. Like, it, you know, at least in the neck of the woods I was in, it seemed like a lot of people had the N64 and there were more kids playing that, at least then, in yeah. my inner circle, than the Sony PlayStation. But Sony just crushed it. And the N64 only moved 20 million units in the United States, which is pretty low from yeah. like what my memory wants it's, to tell me. The data doesn't support what my, my brain's telling me. It's so low because yeah. when I was a kid, obviously it wasn't when it first came out. I was, it was probably like 2000. Everyone had an N64 and I didn't know that many people that had a PS1. Yeah, it, it was wild. I guess Nintendo probably wasn't super happy with its performance. As you look at the NES sold 61 million, 49 million units for the Super Nintendo. And then here you have the N64 moving far less, coming in that 32 million range. Again, Again, the data is kind of surprising is, to me when I weird. when I look at it because I'm like, wow, I I, I guess I would have thought it was higher. I, I don't know. And maybe the four players and stuff like that just made kids like, oh, my friend's got an N64. So maybe, I can just, maybe I don't need yeah, it. Yeah, you don't need it. You can just go over. But it definitely did not repeat the success of the NES no, and the didn't. Super Nintendo. And it was super freaking hyped. So somewhere along the line, I don't know if it's Sony munching into those console homes and, and, and taking those sales, but it just didn't do all that well. Um, what is your nostalgia and memories of the N64? I know that, like, I have huge nostalgia for it. 
the nostalgia is very high for this console. Yes. Um, I would say, you know, some of my best gaming memories were from this era. Uh, we had a group of neighbors up the, up the road, and their oldest son was close to my age. Jimmy was his name, uh, and they had a his little brother was closer to my brother's age, and it was so fun. We would play four player in sixty four all the oh, freaking okay. time. We'll talk about games a little bit later on, but we were playing so much Goldeneye and the wrestling games and Diddy Kong. Like we played games all the time. If school was called off, we were playing games. <laughs> After school, we were playing games all the time. Four player. It was so much fun. A lot of uh, just killer memories around the N64, and honestly, the N64 is probably the console that I wanted the most in my entire life. Like, you know, there's that thing that you're just like, I have to have yeah, that. I want it so bad. That was the N64 for me. I wanted one so damn bad. I'm just obsessed with and it. And you didn't, you didn't get it the year you it came out, right? You got it a year no, after. No, yeah. I got it the year. Ma I must have been the Christmas of '98 because Madden '99 was one was of the games you got I got it. with yeah. it. Um, and I got, I think I got Goldeneye. You know, over going to different people's houses and stuff like my grandparents and that for Christmas, people were getting me that stuff. But I did Christmas morning. I think I just got mad ninety nine in the console. So yeah, it was and it was this console. It was, uh, it was the one with dude, the uh, atomic purple controller. I got my N sixty four for Christmas too. And spoiler alert, if there are young kids watching, I'm sorry, but the N sixty four is the reason that I discovered that Santa wasn't real. Oh hey, so naughty or nice. That kind of sucks because I went down Christmas Eve to get some water and I saw it on the table and then next morning it said from Santa. <laughs> and you're like, wait and a minute. I was minute. like, wait a second. But anyway, thank you so much Santa for it because <laughs> I played it so much. I didn't play that much four player with it initially. I just played it by myself. But I had episode one Pod Racers. I had Shadows of the Empire. I was way into Star Wars during this time period, so... It was a great console for it, that. Yeah, there was like three decent Star Wars games. I loved those games so much. I think I had a couple others, but those were the two games I played nonstop. I had, like, the Pod Racer toy that I would sit next to me while I was playing Pod nice. Racer. <laughs> I, like, hey, I was a freaking nerd. <laughs> I still am. But... <laughs> so much nostalgia. I put it so much. Yeah, it, it definitely, and I think for a lot of folks in our, our age demographic, I think they fall on the, the same boat with the N64. Lots of nostalgia. Collecting for it in 2021, if you're looking to get into collecting for it, kind of recouping what you had as a child, you know, that's what a lot of us crazy yep. collectors do. Let's talk about what it's like to get into. There's a lot of variety. Oh my God. Probably one of the coolest amounts of variety from console perspective resides within the N64 with all the fantastic colors they put out. Dude, I love how many different console variants slash controller variants yeah. slash... There's so many. So, obviously, there's the charcoal, the gray, that's the main one. And then there was, like, the jungle green, which is such a cool color. Yeah. And then there was uh, ice blue, which is another cool color. There was the great purple, the fire orange, the smoke black, which is really cool. And then I know there was a bunch of, like, other ones that were released in Japan. I think yeah. there was a exclusive one to Korea. There, There's all these different yeah. weird ones that are all cool. And I know the in North America that we also got that Pinkachu one, which is oh, pretty sought after really by collectors. Cool. I, I think that's probably the most fun fun part like if you get into folks who collect for the n64 if they're really into it it's it's rare to have, have them only have one console they usually have all yeah, of the colors yeah there's a lot of collectors that do and you know the controllers which we've got you know a ton of controllers this is a kind of a, a pain in the ass if you want to collect for the n64 because this controller oh, maybe doesn't hold up the best and it's because of the own doing of the games they put out but there was some mario party games that required heavy rotation on this joystick, which is, you know, doesn't hold up the best. So if you're picking one up, you always want to check the joystick. Everybody, you, if you watch collectors and, and YouTubers, they'll always say, oh, it's a, it had a tight stick. That's what they mean. And we're fortunate that everything in our collection, we'll get right of it if it doesn't, but you'll find some of these where this, this son of bitch is laying It's off. a limp yeah. dick, dude. Yeah. It's so but soft. You want to have just, a tight stick, yeah. It's from, from this freaking yeah. Mario yeah. Party game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. But there's a lot of different colors, and uh, most of those fantastic consoles that came out had a corresponding controller that you yes. could also get. They had the translucent. Like, this is the one that came with this set, the Atomic, Atomic Purple. Purple. And I don't know if you could buy the Atomic Purple controller by itself or only with this. Now, you could get the Grape Purple one. Leave in the comment section if you could, but I think this was exclusive to this bundle. Yeah. I could be wrong. I just don't recall 
seeing anybody that had this controller and didn't have it from this bundle. And then, you know, you had all the solid color variants oh, as well. Yes. Uh, there's solid green, solid black. I've seen blue, I've seen red. I think I've seen yellow. Yeah, there's a yellow one, I think, for like Donkey Kong or something like that. Well, there yeah. is that rare. I think you had to order it uh, specifically, maybe from Nintendo Power, but it had like that cover, that Donkey Which Kong banana so looking cover. Cool. Uh, I've always kind of wanted that. You can see how you can go down a major rabbit hole with the N64, which I think is part of what makes it so fun to collect for. I mean, there was even a gold console. Oh, the gold one's really cool. Yeah, I think it's a Toys R Us exclusive, maybe? But the gold one's badass. I just love how it's kind of, you can do all this collecting for colors and stuff, and you haven't even gotten into playing the games mm -hmm. yet, which is crazy. And one yeah. of my favorite things to do when I'm playing four player is everyone has a different color. Yeah. Like, if, if we have the same color, it's not going to work. Yeah, no, we gotta we can't have be our friends. Own. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's just cool, and it's, I feel like, it encouraged people to go out and buy multiple consoles, which was weird. Yeah, it, it's definitely something that Nintendo's dabbled with this. You know, we, we, we've already done the GameCube video on this, but there was the purple and the silver and the black, and there was a couple other variants, you know, in different markets, and I'm probably missing a few. But it wasn't as extensive as this. And even in current times, you know, with, you know, the Switch... Yeah, you got different Joy-Cons and stuff, and there's they, and they released like the Mario. They're, they're doing it a little. They're kind of recreating it because they're releasing some like translucent ones or fluorescent ones like this, but it's not the same. I know yeah. the Game Boy is like the closest for color variants. Yeah, yeah. You know, because that was really they were cool. just I think just during this time they were just way into that. You know, the Game Boy Color just had a ton oh. of variants, and even the Game Relish. Boy Relish. Yeah, <laughs> the Game Boy Pocket before that had some different ones and things like that. But that's I think. The coolest thing they did with this console was that, I don't know if you want to call it personalization, but you kind of had that feeling like, man, I'm the only kid that's got the Jungle Green N64. Yeah. And, and, and it was just cool. Mine. Yeah. Uh, it's mine. Yeah. Oh, mine. Speaking of controllers, we got to jump into N64 accessories. Uh, Nintendo, like usual, goes nuts with accessories. So obviously there's the controllers. Yep. And then... There's memory cards, which are super important. And then what's really cool, I always feel like I'm loading a gun. <laughs> I've never loaded a gun, so I don't know if it's even close, but <laughs> rumble packs. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> yeah, so crazy. This was a big deal at the time. The, the rumbling of the controller, it's like, oh my God, this game's so realistic. I got 3D. Yeah, and these are not as fun as you might remember them being. That's just no. my opinion. They do throw the weight distribution it's, off it's on the lot, controller. It's a lot. It's very top heavy once you put it in. But there is something nostalgic about it. It is. There is. And when you go back and play it nowadays, it doesn't even rumble that much. <laughs> no, like, but... Because you're used to, like, PlayStation 4 and all that rumble. But I could be wrong, but wasn't there a commercial where the, the kid's like, oh, like, he's yeah, like, oh, it's too rumbly? Yeah. This is the rumble pack. The big reason why Star Fox 64 is the coolest cinematic gaming experience there is. I don't know that unless you're wanting that full experience and nostalgia, I don't know that it's necessary no, it's to not. get a rumble pack. I wouldn't say it is. You probably need a memory card before you'd need that. The expansion pack was Ooh, a big deal. Yes, that's a really big deal. I want to say the first game that required that was Donkey Kong 64, which I've always felt like that game was a letdown. Sorry if you love Ooh. it. I never, uh, coming out of the Donkey Kong Country games that preceded it on the Super Nintendo, I was so hyped. And I remember when I played it, I was just, uh, the game felt very bare to me, um, very hollow. I just never have really connected with that game. But there are games that came after that that do require that expansion pack so you're going to want to get one of those probably if you're going to collect for the console and if you're a reseller and you find n64s out in the wild here's a hot tip sell the expansion pack separately yeah. you'll make more money because you can get those original jumper packs for the n64 super cheap most retro gaming stores have them for five or six bucks and you can sell the expansion pack for like 40 to 50 yeah, which so. is it's, it's a little hot tip and then um obviously you got the cleaning kit which was super important because it's still cartridge based yeah um, Nintendo was very slow to get in the disc game, and when they did, they had to be different because of the GameCube discs. The, weird. Yeah, they had, didn't they have like a transfer pack too to like maybe stuff over to your Game Boy? Over, I never did that. Oh, yeah, I didn't even, I don't know much about that either. I know there was a voice recognition deal really? for one of the, I want to say like, hey, you, Pinkachu, Pikachu. I just put an N in there for some reason. <laughs> um, something like that. I, I think there's a lot of third party stuff that got thrown in the mix too, but that's kind of the core. I'm sure we're missing some really obscure shit. So one accessory I want to talk about real quick is the Game Shark. Obviously, this is used to cheat with N64 games, but a little secret. This can unlock your N64 and make it region free. So if you have imports 
like this guy, you can play it on any version of the N64. It's a super easy way to play imports and you don't have to mod your console. If you're collecting for it or starting to collect for it, I think you only really need the expansion pack and a controller. Yeah. Like any memory card maybe. Yeah, because some games don't even require the memory card, yeah. but some do, so. So it's all depending on what games you get. But speaking of games, let's talk about our top 10 yeah. N64 games. This is crazy. So we've been doing these top 10s in our past videos. We're very nostalgic for this console, but the games are... This was a very hard list to make. Yeah. It's pretty hard to get to 10. If you had to go beyond 10, it's really tough. But let's talk about the games. Number 10 on the list is an early release for the N64. Always been obsessed with the water physics in this game, Ooh. especially for the time. Wave Race 64. It's Beautiful a game, game I feel like everybody had. I love racers and boat racers. Yeah. It's it's such a sweet game. You know, there was Jet Moto um, for the jet ski connoisseurs and that out there on the PS1. But Wave Race 64, it's still a really fun game to go back to. A little primitive, but yep. the water physics are really good in this game. They did a fantastic job. And then there's another great racer at number nine. Number nine, and this game is very unique. Diddy Kong Racing. When I first played this, I was so used to Mario Kart that I was like, whoa, yeah. it's way different, but it's so cool. It is a very good game, and it's a game that there's a lot of folks out there that prefer it over Mario Kart 64. No, I don't. I, don't I think that's that. taking it too far. It's still good. It's still, it's still really good. And if you're into that four player action, Diddy Kong Racing is a good one to pick up. I actually think we've got it CID Ooh, yeah, as we kind of looking over here. It's a rare game. Yeah. And Speak. not rare in like that you can't find it, rare as in. The publisher. Yes. Oh, they were on fire. Yeah, back, back yeah they day. were. And speaking of four player action, we're moving on to number eight, and that's Goldeneye. Dude, one of my favorite four player games on the N64, yeah. even though I suck at it. I played the hell out of the game. I know the map, the complex, still better than any human being I've Dude, ever met. I know it better than the layout of my own house. Every um, time I play it, I don't even. It's just, I every time I spawn, I'm dead. It's I like, just appear. I know where everything is. Um, I fair. put the Perfect Dark out because this is a superior game to Goldeneye. I just don't connect with this like I did Goldeneye. Goldeneye. Yeah. And I don't have the nostalgia and I for have, it. And I, I honestly haven't played it as much as Goldeneye. I haven't either. This came out and I was kind of already kind of moving past it, I believe, when I got this. I think I had the Dreamcast. So you were way into I was kind of like, yeah, you know, I don't... I loved it. I thought it was a good game. But something about Goldeneye, and maybe it's just because I like James Bond and <laughs> Gold Bond and things like that. I mean, I don't even know if James Bond is the best Bond. Bond. I do prefer Gold Goldeneye Bond. to Perfect Dark, even though I know, technically speaking, it, it's a superior game. I almost spilled the beer there. Uh, uh, superior speaking game. Speaking of spilling beer, we're moving on to our number seven oh. game, dude. This game is so ridiculous, <laughs> and he is a drunk. Yeah. Conker's Bad Fur Day. Yep. I love this game. It's very edgy. What were they thinking? <laughs> Isn't this also a rare game? It is, they, yeah. Dude. Goldeneye was as well, so I mean, they, they... They were on fire. They had their fingerprints all dude, over this console. What a funny game. Yeah. And I did not play it when I was a kid, and I doubt my parents would have even let me play yeah. it. Yeah. But it's if you're into adult. that 3D platforming, collect-a-thon type of game, like, like Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, those hard, type of things cut from the same cloth it's just it's got an edge to it and uh it's rated them for and a reason there's some really fun multiplayer stuff in that game yeah which yeah. is really sweet yeah now moving on to number six and that's super mario 64. it's pretty low on our list i honestly i wanted to put this at number 10. you gotta give it its due yes i don't love the game either but, but it was so, iconic at the time and when I was a kid, I had this game and I absolutely loved it. So I have huge nostalgia for it, even though I hate it now as an adult. <laughs> I didn't even want to, yeah, honestly, to put it on the list, but I had to. I think the N64 actually got delayed because of Super Mario 64. Well, yeah, I mean, because they were just working so and much. It launched on with it. two games. That maybe was a reason for its, you know, lack of sales, yeah. if you will. It came out with this and Pilot Wings 64. What game were you gonna get? Yeah, I'm not fun. crapping on Pilot Wings, but. <laughs> they basically released with one game <laughs> that you needed to have. Pilot Wings was okay, but it's like they could have maybe came out with a little bit more. But and I know I know Super Mario 64 is like everyone's top N64 game. Uh, not just, for us. Not for us. We're not IGN. So moving on. Yeah. To number five. The series started on ooh, the N64. Ooh, ooh. 
It is fun going back and playing the original Smash Bros because the roster's like eight people. Yeah. And it's crazy because we're so used to the Switch version where there's like hundreds. Yeah, yeah. This game is still so much more it, it, fun. It is. We actually play this. There's a arcade bar near us that usually has this and Mario Kart 64 yes. set up. And this is always a fun one to sit on and play on a projector screen. Even though it's on a projector and it looks like garbage. Oh, yeah. But I it's mean, still so N64 much fun. 64 in general kind of looks like garbage. So True. imagine blowing it up on a shitty projector screen hard to even tell what you're doing but this game is a lot of fun it got the series started and uh it's a staple uh for a nintendo ip they did a really good job with this one number four number four zelda ocarina of time ocarina of time this game is beautiful it's such a fun game yeah it, it's not my favorite zelda game but it's one of those few games that i do like going back and playing yeah. on the n64 there's some of these games on this list as much as i love goldeneye it's hard to find people who can sit down if they weren't way into it and weren't like at the level that i was at that game and have them have any fun playing it yeah it's just not with the control scheme and the Dude, way the you have to strafe them. with the c buttons very tough that's a tough one but Ocarina of Time, it has stood the test of time. No pun intended. Whoa. But I love that game a lot. Um, number three is one of your favorite series Number three. Ever. Um, my, if this was my personal list, this would be number one. Uh, Banjo-Kazooie. I love collect-a-thons. I love the charm of this game. The music. This game is beautiful. It's so much fun. And I love the whole franchise. Even though it hasn't really... There's nothing lately in it. I mean, he is in Smash now, now which is pretty cool. Yeah. The original Banjo-Kazooie, such a fun, unique, weird game. Yeah, it's, it's very good. I'm not a huge collect-a-thon game fan, but if you were going to get into those, it's top of the shelf. It's so good. Mario Kart 64, just amazing. You still had to know really what you were doing. be good to yeah. get the power slide to work, and those who can it's like the haves and the have-nots. You either know how to power slide or you don't. This is a game I, I'm still pretty good at. I'm better at some of the other Mario Karts. Just because, for whatever reason, Mario Kart's a game once the, like, the newer ones come out. I very seldom go back yeah. and play the older ones. But, but I do love this game. And I love how, in this game, if you know how to do the stuff, you can win. Because in the new games, it's kind of like, oh, you don't know who's going to win. Because it kind of keeps it fair. It's kind of randomizer. Yeah, there's yeah. some rubber banding, for sure, in but the newer games. in the older ones, man, it's, it's such a fun game. And... We play it all the time at that barcade. Yeah, down. It's, yeah. it's so much fun. It's a go-to. And now moving on to number one. We play this game probably multiple times a year. Yeah, for we sure. We love wrestling. And I know there's other wrestling games that are pretty good, but No Mercy is such a fun game. Insert the, the AKI games or Aki, however you say it, uh, games from THQ here. Yeah, I'd say WrestleMania 2000. I get it. One A, one B. The, They're the, both really the good. linchpin for me of why I always go with No Mercy is I liked the customization a little bit better. And this might not seem like a big deal, but it was a huge <laughs> deal at the time. You could go backstage. Oh, which is so much fun. And it had pretty awesome interactive backstage environments. It made the game so the customization you could do. We would always do a 30. I think it was 30 man Royal Rumble no ring outs and just move no pinning the only way was to make someone knock someone out and so these would go on forever hours dude that's hours you'd go backstage just be freaking beating people up with stuff and it'd take forever to knock them out we would play it for like a whole afternoon it's just i i love no mercy i think it is still the best wrestling game wrestlemania 2000 is really damn yeah, good it's too up there like, they're really close. I, and if, you know, I flipped a coin, and if I ended up with WrestleMania 2000 or No Mercy, I would be okay. I ever so slightly prefer No Mercy. I it's think, the backstage environment. Dude, No Mercy is one of my favorite wrestling games, but I think I prefer All-Stars over it just because it's more arcadey. Yeah, All-Stars um, is cool. On um, what, but, PS3, Xbox yeah, 360. But, there, yeah. dude, No Mercy is badass. I, I know there's a ton of other games we didn't mention. Obviously, there's other wrestling games. There's Majora's Mask, which is a great Zelda game. Yeah. I think there's Hydro Thunder. I can't which, forget that. Yeah, that's a good pull uh, there because I believe the N64 version is the only home console option that lets you play four-player. Oh, really? Yeah, the Dreamcast version is closer to the arcade port, but, but I'm only, pretty sure it's only two-player. That's so dumb. Well, and I'm, I could be wrong, but I'm just going off of the wrist here. I think that's why the Hydro Thunder on N64 is like a $50 game. Because of the four-player I, I think it's aspect. the four-player. It doesn't look as good as the Dreamcast one. doesn't play as good as the Dreamcast one, but you can play four-player. I freaking love Hydro yeah. Thunder. There's, um, there's so many other... Star Soldier? Star Soldier. It's, it's, yeah. The game isn't rare, but it's a rare occurrence on the N64. I, it could be the only spaceship shooter. 
possibly that I know of. That's like your it's a vertic vertically scrolling spaceship traditional shooter. A lot of the stuff on the N64 is messing with 3D. Yeah, it's getting really weird. Star Fox 64. Yeah. Um, obviously, I talked about them earlier, but the Star Wars games, yep. Pod Racers, Shadows of the Empire, uh, those are phenomenal games. I think there's a um, Rogue game on there. Yeah, uh, there is Rogue Leader. Yeah, Rogue yep. Leader, the first one. Yep. Uh, which is really cool. There's there's a lot of great games, and then a lot of games that don't hold up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it's tough to say there's a lot of great games because even on our top ten, there's some games I could I could be okay never playing again. True. Yeah. It's just my opinion on the console. So there's a little bit of the history of the console. There are some of the accessories and the games. And now we got to kind of come to a, a decision here of kind of our opinion. Let's talk about the current market. And if you should jump into the N64 in 2021, if you've got some money laying around and you want to collect video games. The current market is very high. It's a lot of the games are very expensive. They're hard to find. I know our buddy Toe Splash is going for a complete set right now. Yeah, it's been a pain for him, too. It hurts me watching him, how, how much money he's spending. Yeah. It's insane, because a lot of games are super expensive, and they're not even worth it, I feel like. Yeah, the, so the market's high, and it's been high for quite some and time. And I don't see it dipping for a while. I don't either. I because think it's, it's so nostalgic, it's that's why. Right in that wheelhouse of, of people who are getting disposable income and wanting to go back. The console, however is a very reliable console. Yes. So if you had to compare it from a reliability standpoint to the Sega Saturn and the PS1, which are both pretty reliable, but they're disc-based consoles, and those disc drives, they're a bit of a problem. They fail. The N64 will be around longer than us. Oh, and it will, I, I very seldom find one that doesn't work. We find them all the time, and they usually fire up immediately. Yeah. They're so hard to kill. And I will say that the controllers, that's the struggle because of the limp joysticks, but yeah. other than that, even the controllers hold up like it's yeah. that hard plastic you know it's fun uh to collect for it, it is fun just because of the, the color variants and the variety i get why people like collecting for it i understand it. and the nostalgia my opinion i think our opinion there's only a fistful of must play games how do you collect that's the question yes do you collect for collecting sake or do you collect to play games because if you're wanting to play games i've already said this is the console I'm probably the most nostalgic for, and it's one of the least played consoles in the game room yes. today. This game, or this console, lives on better in the rear view mirror, and in the memory, and in your nostalgic heart, than it does in real life. A lot of times you go back to an N64 game and you're just going to be let down. Yeah. I just don't think it delivers it's, it's... to what you remember. That's my thoughts on the console. It's so nostalgic, and I think... Honestly, this is going to be a hot take, but I think the N64 is overrated. I, going back to it, I, yes, I agree. Because people put it on this high pedestal because of nostalgia, and I freaking loved it as a kid. And so die. But yeah. it just it does not, I know people get mad when you don't say it, but it does not hold up. Yeah, it's it's tough to go back to, and it's, it, again, I wanted an N64 as my most wanted Christmas present I can ever remember, but I really think we could trim our N64 collection down to five to ten games, and, and I wouldn't lose and, any sleep. No, we would, it would be fine, and we would probably make a ton of money. Yeah, it's a you know something we might even have to consider, because as long as I got WrestleMania 2000 or No Mercy, I, I'm okay. Yeah, as long as I have Banjo-Kazooie, that's all I need. I mean, I just... I don't know. So I think it depends on what you play yep. and how you collect. Maybe there's someone watching this is like, you guys are dead wrong. I love these games. Touche. Yeah, that's that's, that's a, you. This is just our opinion and the way we see it. And I will say one thing about the N64 is if you've never played an N64 and you're jumping into it for the first time, it's going, there is a learning curve. First off, a lot off, of frustration. The controller, how do you hold it? Figure it out. It's three prongs. And then the game's inverted controls on some of them some of them look terrible yeah it's very tough if you've never played it and if you don't have that nostalgia you're gonna play it for five minutes and be like no we thanks. did an n64 event uh and robert always says how do you hold the controller obviously we both know how but it was unique because a lot of kids came yeah and almost every kid that grabbed the controller we're talking young kids and we were doing mario kart they're like how do you hold this they they didn't know yeah and it kind of like hit us that day. I was like, man, how many kids have asked you how to hold this? And a, you're like, a, uh, uh, pretty much everyone. A lot of people for us, I know exactly what to do. 
because I, I grew up with it. Yeah. But they literally were holding it like this and then like trying to reach their thumb over. And, like, <laughs> yeah. it, was, it, was, it was or weird. they were like, <laughs> it's just, um, they just didn't get it. I guess for us, what we're getting at, the price of getting into it in 2021. Now, if you've still got, which a lot of the stuff we have is from when we were kids. Yes. So we haven't bought a lot of N64 games since we started collecting together and started the channel. But your money will go a lot further, and I think you're going to feel better about your purchases if you if you dive into something else. The quality of the games, in my opinion, does not equate to the dollar value that no, they bring. No, not even close. Maybe a hot take, but I, I just it's it's one of our least played and collect for consoles. It's really hard to say, oh, you're missing out. There's some consoles we would say that for. Yeah. If you're watching this and you've never played the Super Nintendo, you're missing out. The NES, you're mm -hmm. missing out. And even the generation after this which is a lot, you know, tends to be a lot cheaper to get into. The GameCube, not so much, yeah, but PS2 and Xbox. The Wii's really, you know, easy to get into right now. I just don't know that the N64 is that. You can read your own mail, make your own decisions. Yeah, definitely, if you're a huge nostalgia for it, or if you really want to get into it, go ahead, do it. It's But for us, it's a very middle of the road, if not bottom of the road console. Overrated. I'm going to say it again. It's just doesn't i wish i could stick up for it yeah because i, I just can't I other loved than it as a kid other than the wrestling games those in and of themselves are possibly worth owning the console but aside from that and maybe a couple others it would be a hard pass if, if we didn't have what we have currently and today we had to pay current market prices for some of this stuff we probably wouldn't do it nope it just doesn't yeah hold up i do want to bring up one thing though because we we're talking about all the different color variants and i don't know how we forgot about this the game cartridges are different colors. Yeah. Which, that's another cool reason to collect for it, because, you know, like, the Tony Hawk, like, yellow, black, wrestle, it, that's yeah, really cool. Yeah, the first Tony Hawk's blue, I think. They're, yeah, there's that is a cool So thing. that's a cool... Makes it fun, but it's... But, but still, get you're it. getting it for the color and not really the game. It's like, yeah, it's fun to collect for, but it's not super fun to, to play. play. Yeah. So is it worth collecting for at all? That is the question of the episode. Let's talk about this beer. Yes, let's talk about this Bad beer. Bad beer month. I think we've done this on the channel before. This is the Gotji beer, Miller High Life. Yep. The champagne of beers. This is one of the best cheap beers, hands down. So good. Such a good beer that if you drink a Miller High Life when you get off work, oh my God, it tastes so good. Yeah. It, it tastes good. I love introducing people to Miller High Life that aren't beer drinkers because they're like, whoa. Yeah. They're like, this is actually good. I think it has a bad stigma for some reason. Um, there's a lot of people that, you know, if you, you know, they, talk about high life they come like ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. it is the best cheap beer you can get Chris. it's not even close trust us we've had most of them i'll never forget when i was working at a grocery store chain for many a years there was a, a guy that uh, came in he was one of the craft beer distributors and uh, you know i was already into the high life thing and i asked him i was like what's your favorite beer that's like not craft he's like oh miller high life hands, hands down. down i think there's a lot of craft beer fans just beer fans in general they would back us on saying high life is the champagne Dude, of beers for a reason get it out of the glass bottles it's so good in the yeah. glass bottles i don't know what it is unless I, you like that metallic aluminum taste i which, had it in the cans <laughs> yeah, but so know, so have I, yeah. glass bottle man so good yep. premium brewed and i don't think we've talked about it in a long time i think we showed it in our game room tour but we have drank it so much that we found one where the label was upside down yeah. and it's right behind me on the shelf that's it's one of our crowning moments yeah i love that it's never been open label upside down i've called this place out before in episodes but if you're ever in the des moines iowa area you got to check out the high life lounge oh amazing shag carpet old beer signs wood paneling bar food that you would have never seen on a menu except for maybe in the 70s it's comfort food baby and i think all beers they have on tap is stuff only brewed before 78 it's one of the you best can get places high life on tap on the planet. Dude, I literally say it's grandpa's bar and it's grandma's kitchen. Like that's what the place yeah. is, dude. It's I love it's my favorite place. <laughs> you in the need morning. to sell them that. I should. Grandpa's bar, grandma's, grandma's kitchen. kitchen. That should be their slogan. Yeah, it's so good. It's Miller Meat High Loaf. Life. Dude, yeah, they're meat or their green bean casserole. <laughs> Oh my roasted, god! They roasted chicken. Oh, what do you dude. get? You get the like deviled eggs, dude. Their deviled eggs are so good. Bacon wrapped tater tots, spam egg and cheese sandwich. Oh my God! Crinkle cut fries. I think we're on gonna... mashed potatoes. We gotta wrap this up and order some food. Yeah, we do. <laughs> um, and drink some more yeah. high life, and uh, not play the N64. Yeah, <laughs> guys. Hopefully, we didn't ruffle anybody's feathers too much. We know there's a lot of N64 fans out there. It's it's a leap to say we're not fans of the console. I'm fans of my memory. Yeah. 
I'm a fan of what it did at the time. I think there's so many cool things about what it did with its colors and all that. But just to be perfectly honest, in 2021, it does not deliver. If you're a fan of Donkey Kong and you played Donkey Kong 64 as a kid and you played Donkey Kong Country and you go back and put in Donkey Kong Country, it will be just like you remember it. I promise. It's badass. It's going to deliver. And if you haven't played Donkey Kong 64 in many a year and you put it in today, it's going to let you down. It, it just will. And that's the problem with the console. It's more nostalgic than it is great. We appreciate you guys tuning in and subscribing to the channel. We'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Off The Grid. So Sony crushed this day. Fuck, there that. <laughs> wow. That's gonna drive parents nuts. Is it ever? Kids are gonna want it. The parents are not gonna be able to find it. It's one of those classic Christmas things and I can't believe we're talking about Christmas already. I know, you know what? I can hardly figure out paddle pong. I don't know how the kids play this thing. You ever sat down with a kid when they start playing these things? No, they're very crazy? good at oh, it. Oh, they're excellent. Let's head over to uh, Perry and Ron right now for Sports Night. They look like a couple of uh, electronic game players. You oh, play, yeah. You play Nintendo? Uh, no. An ass this fat can fit into a cartridge this small. I'm not right. I'm getting in shape. Very reliable console. Yes. So if you had to compare it for, from a lot... <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I'll never forget when I was working at a grocery gro <laughs> But just how easy is it to play Nintendo 64? After all, the controller looks like it could be used on some kind of military jet. <laughs>